said if we did not have that money voted upon in February 2009, we would have been in worse, a worse place. Thank you, Mr. McClintock. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, um, I'm a big fan of your work with the Clinton administration. I'll get to that in just a moment. But first, I have to take strong exception with your testimony that a provision to support the public credit by assuring that first call on revenues goes to support the public credit is somehow unworkable or tantamount to defaulting on our other obligations. The fact is most other states have provisions in their constitutions uh, to do so and have for hundreds of years. Uh, last year, uh, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke told the Senate that he credited the relative stability in municipal markets, quote, he says, which suggests that investors still are reasonably confident that there won't be any default among major borrowers. One reason they uh, might believe that is because most states have rules which put debt repayment and interest payment at a very high priority above many other obligations of the state and locality, end quote. Mr. Bernanke sat right where you're sitting now and told this very committee, quote, my concern is about not defaulting on the debt. And for me, that's a very high priority. So a debt prioritization bill would help on that count very much. Now, since Mr. Bernanke is the president's appointee, I've got to believe that internally the administration is of two minds on this subject. And I would urge you to listen to your Fed chairman and look to the centuries of experience of other states no state has ever used such a provision to protect uh, their credit as an excuse not to pay for their other bills. On the contrary, these provisions protect their credit and actually support and maintain their ability to pay all of their all other obligations in the event of a shortfall. Protecting the public credit supports all of the other obligations of the government, and it's a necessary provision in a government like ours that's now borrowing nearly 40 cents of every dollar it spends. I mean, put it very simply, when you're depending on your credit cards to pay your bills, you'd better make the minimum payment first, and I would urge you to reconsider your position on that. But now to the happier discussion of the uh, success of the Clinton administration under your management. Is it correct that uh, President Clinton decreased federal spending uh, by nearly 4% of GDP during his eight years in office? There was a, a, a big cut in spending uh, while he was in office. There was also a lot of economic growth and more revenue. Is it correct that President Bush increased federal spending by 2% of GDP during his eight years that followed? Um, I would have to go back and check the numbers, Congressman. I believe it is. And I believe you might also find that it's correct that the President Obama has increased federal spending by another 2% of GDP just in the last five years. Uh, is it correct that President Clinton dramatically decreased entitlement spending by uh, uh, signing the Welfare Reform Act? He did uh, sign welfare reform, yes. Is it correct that President Bush dramatically increased entitlement spending with his Medicare Part D? I can't disagree with that. In fact, the biggest expansion of entitlement spending up until that point since the um, Great Society, yeah. as I recall. It, it, it was a, a program that we thought, I thought at the time should have been paid for. And is it correct that President Obama has dramatically increased entitlement spending even more with his so-called yeah. Affordable Care Act? Yeah. Uh, the Affordable Care Act net saved the you know, bottom line, so I, I think it's actually very distinguishable from uh, the prescription drug benefit. Well, do, do you not agree that it is a massive expansion of yeah. entitlement spending? So, Congressman, I'd be happy to address the issues you raised. Um, they're obviously... Well, well the, the, the issue yeah. I raised is very simple. Why can't the President's budget yeah. be more like President Clinton's well, and a lot less like <laughs> President Bush's? Um, the, the reality of demographics and the difference in where we were in the 1990s and where we are today is that my generation, the baby boom, is starting to retire. We have tens of millions of people coming onto Social Security I, and I, Medicare, no, I, and that's what's driving those uh, percentages of spending. So I think we have a fundamental question, are we well, going to well, keep faith with that generation? Now, now the, the biggest single expenditure in the history of the United States was the so-called stimulus bill at the outset of this administration that cost almost as much as the entire Iraq war from start to finish. Uh, so, so, you know, don't give me, well, this is beyond our control. It's entirely within your control. It was within President Clinton's control. Uh, uh, and, and again, my only problem with, with President Obama and his budget is not 
that he, is, he has changed George Bush's policies. The problem is he's taken the worst of them and doubled down on them. Congressman, we have, we have agreed in 2011 to over a trillion dollars of savings on discretionary spending. Um, it is much larger than the reductions in, in uh, discretionary spending made in the Clinton years. We have had major savings in the Affordable Care Act uh, in, that added to the life of the Medi Medicare Trust Fund. We're proposing in this budget considerable new savings, including fundamental structural reforms in entitlement programs. Thank so I don't disagree that we need to have more savings, but we also need revenue to get to the goal. Ms. Castor. Good morning, Secretary Liu. Thank you for being here to discuss the, the President's budget.